In this video, we're going to look at a couple of more application problems that involve sales tax. So remember, what we're doing here is trying to just stick to this basic equation of amount equals percent times base. Okay, and in this first example, it says if the tax on an item is 59 cents and the tax rate is 8.5%, what is the cost of the item? So first of all, let's identify which of these three things, amount, percent, or base, uh, we're looking for here. Well, hopefully it's pretty clear it's the base for a couple of reasons. First, we stated in the previous video that for sales tax, the base is always going to be that original cost, right? And that's clearly what they're asking us for. Uh, but also, remember, the base is always the thing you'll take a percentage of, right? And we know that we always take a percentage of the cost of the item when we're referring to sales tax. So as I set this up, I understand that I will have amount equals percent times base is my x value. I'm going to go ahead and put x here first. Um, 59 cents, that's the only other number I'm given, other non-percent number I'm given, so that's got to be the amount, and of course 59 cents is the amount of tax, so that makes sense. Now before I put any percent in here, there's something that we always need to do when we've identified that the thing we're looking for is the base. The thing that I always need us to do is to check to make sure that the amount uh, that we're putting here and the percentage that we're given represent the same thing. So what I mean by that is we would check to see, okay, well, what is 59 cents? Well, clearly, that's the amount of tax, right? And what is 8.5%? Well, 8.5% is the percent tax, right? It's the tax rate. So both of these are representing the same thing, the amount of tax, the percent of tax. And so now that I know that they're representing the same thing, I'm going to go ahead and pencil in 8.5% as a decimal number in there. Now you might be looking at what I just did and wondering why I bothered to state the obvious like that. Well, in the next uh, example, you'll see why. But that's something we always need to do when we're looking for the base. All right, so at this point, we can go ahead and solve our equation by dividing both sides by 0 0.085. Okay. And so we've got to do some division here, obviously. So we'll have 0 0.59 divided by... Uh, 0 0.085, but I can't leave that decimal in the divisor, so I'm going to go ahead and send that three places to the right. And I know that was a real sloppy job of writing 0 0.085, but I knew that I was going to have to rewrite the division problem anyway, so that's why I didn't bother making it real nice. So the division problem I'm really doing here is 590 divided by 85. So of course 85 doesn't go into 5, it does not go into 59, but it does go into 590 and that will happen 6 times. So 6 times 5 is 30, 6 times 8 is 48, plus 3 is 51. Okay. Now obviously I'm doing my division fairly quickly here because um, you know I've worked this problem out ahead of time and kind of know what's what's happening ahead of time. You know your division might not go quite as quickly and that's okay. You might have to do a little more guessing and checking. Um, 85 goes into 800 nine times. Nine times five is 45. Nine times eight is 72 plus four is 76. And I need to do a little bit of subtraction. I haven't given myself a ton of room to work here, so I think it'd be a good idea for me to use a different color. So zero becomes a 10. I've got to go all the way over here, make that a seven so that I can borrow from here, make it a 10, but then take one away and make it a nine. So this is 10 minus five is five. Nine minus six is three, okay? 
So we'll go another one. And so we drop that zero down. And 85 goes into 350 four times. Five times four is 20. And looks like 34. So we have a remainder of 10. And I'm about out of room, but that's okay. Because I, you know, I don't have a remainder of zero at this point. However, we're talking about money here. So it doesn't make any sense for me to report any more than to the cents place. And that's where we're at. So the only other thing I need to do is just add one more zero, drop it down, and just answer the question of how many times 85 goes into 100, and that happens once. So we know that we're gonna leave this four alone, and so this is gonna be a rounded off answer, but we're gonna say that the item originally cost about $6.94. So now let's take a look at the second example here. So it says the cost of a DVD including tax is $8.90. If the tax rate is 8%, what is the price of the DVD before tax? Again, hopefully I think very quickly you should uh, understand we're looking for the base. Why? Because it says what is the price before tax, right? The base is always the price prior to tax being applied. And so we know that's what we're looking for. And the fact that 1890 is the only other number other than a percentage that we're given means that 1890 has to go in there. And I'll just put 18.9 in for the amount. And so let me put my X over here once again for the base. And I'm leaving the percentage blank on purpose. So um, what I want to do is just like I did up here, I want to check to see whether the amount that I've, I'm given in the problem and the percent that I'm given in the problem um, represent the same thing. Okay, So I have this $18.90. What is that? Well, $18.90 is not just the amount of tax. right? It is the cost of the DVD plus tax. right? So this is the original original cost plus the tax. That's what 1890 is. Okay, well what is 8%? 8% is just the percent tax, right? The tax has a percentage. So well, what's missing here? Well, I've got tax and tax, but then we have this original cost, but there's nothing in this 8% about original cost. So what we have to do is make it so that the percentage we're using is representing the same thing as the amount we're using. So since this amount is original cost plus tax, I need my percent to be essentially original percent plus percent tax. All right, so well, what does original percent mean? Well, since the percentages are all based off of the original price of the DVD, the original price of the DVD could be thought to be 100%, right? It's the, it's the full amount that the DVD costs, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the 100% that represents the original cost and then add on the 8%, which represents the tax. And so now, by adding those together and using 108%, now my 100% matches the original cost in the amount, and the 8% matches the tax. And so now the percent and the amount represent the same thing. Okay? So, what I put in here is not 0 0.08, it's 1.08. Okay. Um, another thing you can do is maybe write out a sentence like we have in the past. You could say something like this, $18.90 is blank percent of the original price. Okay, and then maybe just put in 8%. So $18.90 is 8% of the original price. Well, if it's only 8% of the original price, that would indicate that the DVD cost a ton of money. 
And so writing out a sentence like that might might kind of make you think, okay, 8% doesn't seem right to put there, right? But then you realize, okay, 1890, that is the original cost plus uh, the tax. And so, okay, well, I'll have 100% plus the 8%, giving me a total of 108% of the original price. Okay. All right, so we just need to divide both sides by 1.08. Okay, so over here, we have 18.9 divided by 1.08. And again, I'm gonna have to move my decimal point over in both of these numbers, two places, which means I gotta add a zero here. All right, so the division problem that I really need to do here is 1890 divided by 108. Of course, 108 goes into 189 once. We get a remainder of 81. Drop down the zero. Um, 108 goes into 810 seven times. Seven times zero plus five, and so 756. Need to do a little bit of borrowing here, but I'm kind of running out of room. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and just state that the remainder is 54. Put a decimal point, drop that zero down. 108 goes into 540 five times, and it's going to go in exactly 540 times. So no rounding necessary here. We get 17.5 for our x. But, you know, please don't leave the answer like this, 17.5. Remember, this was a dollar amount. So this means that the DVD cost, the DVD is $17.50 before tax.